So welcome back to Digger Detecting, guys. Welcome also back to Tony's Paddock, where some will remember we were hunting here last week. And we've got uh, Andrew over the back there, the father-in-law, and he was using the Vanquish 540. Well, today he's on the Equinox 800, and he's got that little six-inch sniper coil on the end. He's going to try and work around this house site and get in amongst all the rubbish and pluck out all the treasure. And we're doing the same. We've got the Equinox 900. We've got the little six-inch coil. Last week we were running the 11, and uh, we did have some good finds. However, the six inch coil i'm super excited to see what we can find here today because the six inch coil helps get in between all those targets and uh, look last week is one thing that i uh, i learned about this site it is a very very trashy site a lot of bottle tops a lot of rubbish to contend with however if you can work through it you can get out the coins and the good items that's so that six inch coil is going to be key today and as i said i'm super excited to see what we can find here and what it can do so let's get set up let's get started and uh, let's see how we go so we got our very first target hunting there today with the Equinox 900 and that ripper little 6 inch coil and this guy coming up at a 38 and a 39 which uh, to be expected we've got a little tailor's a little tailor button there so probably off someone's trousers uh, dropping as he's walked out the front door and we're not out the back so we're not in the rubbish dump so I dare say he's been uh, broken off the pants and lost not uh, not per se discarded in the rubbish so once we get out the back anything we find in amongst the glass and uh, all the burnt off uh, rubbish uh, that there we can presume has been discarded so great little find though and we can even see the impression of the little uh, dirt plug where he come out from so great little uh, great little way to start a little tailor's button into the pouch let's keep going so for our next target along the fence line, I think we have a bit of a coin spill, a coin that I hit too uh, up top there. And uh, just looking down below, we can see another little half penny hiding in the hole. How cool is that? I think they've been stuck together. Let's, uh, let's see if we've got any more in there. Pinpoint is not on. That will help. There's another signal uh, just about here too. So we might be on a bit of a running coin spill there. Two pennies in the one hole, one scratched and one nice little half penny. I'm not sure if he's a Commonwealth or a Rue penny either. Let's have a bit of a look. He looks to me like he could be a Commonwealth. No, he's he's not. He is a Rue penny. You can see the uh, kangaroo quite clearly. So, wow, awesome stuff. Another two pennies in the same hole together. Let's stand up. Let's fill this hole in. I stand up and as I said, we've got another couple of signals. One here. Uh, and also another one under the pinpointer. Uh, so let's dig them out and see what's co what uh, what comes of it. Well, it wasn't a coin for our next target. I remember we had the two pennies coming out in the one hole here, and I said I had another signal right beside. However, it did sound a little bit large, and that is what's come out. Uh, so quite a bit bigger than a coin, uh, but still a cool old relic, the old cogwheel uh, with, uh, with the metal shaft still running in, in the center there. So pretty cool i just walked over to andrew too he just got a king edward little half penny i said to andrew he had a very short ruling uh, somewhere from around the 1901 to about 1907 1908 uh, so early 1900s a little king edward half penny uh, is andrew's first find for the day first neat find first coin coming out uh, so he's doing a great job on that equinox 800 let's keep cracking along so still working along the fence line here guys and we've been digging a lot of rubbish with a couple of coins in between. Now here is our next one, a popping straight out of the hole. And to be honest, I thought it to be another bottle top. But there we go, the coin impression and there's the coin sitting off to the side which just popped out just like that uh, with the shovel there. So how cool. Actually, wait a minute. Look at that. I can see another coin hanging off the back there. So there we go. I only just realised that. We've got a double coin spill once again. Let's have a look at this guy. We do too. Oh, that's awesome. We're going to hit the uh, hit the jackpot here today. So there we go. I was wrong. We've got two coins coming out from the one hole once again. We're on a bit of a lucky streak coin spill. So we've got a Commonwealth there, an early type design. And this one's going to be the same. Once again, a Commonwealth early type design. A bit hard for us to get the dates off them just yet. However, we will clean all these coins up at the end of the day and show and share. But there we go. One coin impression for one coin and our secondary coin impression up the back. Let's just sit them off to the side there and let's check that we did not have a third. That's, uh, that's pretty lucky, isn't it? Two coin spills uh, straight away for the morning. So, nope, not to be. Uh, just the two coins. Let's put them in the pouch and let's keep going. 
So Andrew's just popped over to me and he said, oh, I've got uh, I've got a really cool badge. Uh, what do you got there, mate? <laughs> McDonald's badge. A McDonald's badge. <laughs> Let's hold him up into the sunlight. What's he actually say? A Aussie of the month, McDonald's. <laughs> oh, what's on the back? No. Miller's. There we go. I've never ever seen anything like that. Let's zoom back in and have another look. Aussie of the month with the little Australian flag off the side and the Macca's emblem down below. There we go. Aussie of the month. Jeez. <laughs> the month, what are you doing right, eh? <laughs> Bloody hell. Good target. Good target, though. Because I'm using the Vanquish, mate. The Equinox. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Andrew's been running the Vanquish for a few weeks now, a little bit over a month now, and uh, but ideally he loves the Equinox 800 uh, with that ripper little six-inch coil, like what I'm running on the 900 here today. So awesome stuff. Aussie yeah. of the month. Well done. <laughs> Well, we are slowly getting older with what we're finding, and that be the old pennies. Check that one out. That is an 1870, a little seated Britannia half penny once he focuses there. What a ripper, though. He was coming in at a 51.52 on the Equinox 900, and I thought it to be maybe a little sixpence. Uh, but there we go. Queen Victoria on the backside there. Very hard to see. I've not really cleaned her up too much. Queen Victoria on the backside there, though, and a Cedar Britannia with 1870. What a cracker coin to find. And uh, it helps date this side a little bit more. You know, remember when we uh, were here hunting there the other week and we found the old 1858, uh, the old Hyden de Carl merchant token? Well, there we go. That is another old item from this site. And as I said, it helps date this area, helps date this, this house site. Uh, so with Andrew's Macca's badge coming out, we can safely put this uh, site well up into the 1950s, 60s, uh, even right through to the 80s uh, when McDonald's first come to this local area. Uh, so say 1980s uh, from right back to the 1850s, uh, there is a lengthy, lengthy history here and a lot of, a lot of stuff for us to find. Uh, let's keep going. So we've been a little busy for the last 10 minutes humming along and uh, I've just yelled out to Andrew, hey, you best come and have a look at what we've just found. Uh, so as you can see, we've got a series of holes in front of us that I've been digging along. Uh, so we're going to follow the Hansel and Gretel trail of coins and we're going to start with that, uh, that hole that's just been buried, uh, filled back in again. Uh, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. And uh, as I said to Andrew, I don't think he's going to like me too much after he sees what uh, what I've been up to for the last 10 minutes. So let's go have a look, shall we? We need the shovel. We need the pinpointer. I say, Andrew, we're going to start over here, mate. Uh, Mr. Australia of the Year. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mr. Macca's Australia of the Year, man. Yeah. Uh, so look, what, what happened first is uh, we'll just set it back up and show you. That was uh, popped out to the side there. And I had the pinpointer in here looking around for my target. And all I could come across was this little button, a little tailor button, which is a great find. And, uh, you know, nice to, nice to come out of the ground. However, what I got in this hole uh, when I swung over with the, uh, the 900 was a high signal, a 91. And I knew a button would not come up as a 91. Well, look at what we did get out. I think it's going to be another merchant token. Can you see how big that coin is? So we have not cleaned it up. I literally I just wanted to fill the hole in and keep on digging and uh, go and suss out what else we could find. Oh my word, that is Queen Victoria, and that is an 1854 from what I can see. Jeez, I'm shaky, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm super excited because, uh, wait till, we got this Andrew, wait till you see what's in that hole, wait till you see what's in that hole and that hole and that hole, uh, and then wait till you see what's in the very last hole, mate. It's a killer of a day. We are, we're, on, we're on fire already. So look, that to be is going to be a merchant token. What I will do is I will clean him up and we'll come back and have a better look. But 1854, I think I said, that's definitely going to be a merchant token. So let's leave him here. We can be uh, at him all day otherwise. And let's move on to our next find. So this is where we walked over to next. And bingo, we pulled out our next find. Which, uh, to me, what do you think that looks like, Andrew? That's a ring, mate. That's a ring. That looks like a silver ring, too. Yeah, it does. Do you want to do the honours and pop the dirt out for us? I'm shaky. I'm excited. Look at the that. Rattles, mate. Look at that. So we've got a silver ring by the looks for our next find. And look, this house could have burnt down. Uh, maybe, maybe it burnt down. Maybe it was discarded. Maybe it was even lost, you know. We're technically at the front of the house right now. So there we go, a nice old pretty ring. I don't know if there's any stones in there. 
Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll leave that one with Andrew for a second. We'll keep going and show you what we dug next. So next off, we walked off into the rough here and we pulled out another target, which happened to be another penny. How awesome is that? And then we walked over a little bit further and uh, well, actually we haven't discovered what this one is. We might need the shovel again and the pinpointer. Uh, so that's a mystery hole for a second there. We walked over and got our next target yet again. And uh, to be honest, I'm uh, excited about this item. However, I know I don't know what it is. Uh, if anybody can ID that piece, it looks like a, a part of a toy car to me. Any, anybody can ID that piece, so drop a comment below. I'd love to uh, love to suss him out. Uh, so a mystery item, that one. And then, oh, let me get through the branches. And then we walked over here. We got out from uh, in amongst the trees. Uh, we popped out our next plug and another coin. As some remember there the other week, we did do a few coins from this site. But uh, tell you what, we've been here for an hour and we've already smashed out about 10 coins and a merchant token. And we got our next target moving there forward again. And look what it happens to be, Andrew. I'm just going to flip him over and I'll show you what I've seen. Oh! <gasps> For Lauren, baby, how awesome is that? Yeah. 1958, a beautiful, beautiful Australian Florin. You were here with the Vanquish the other week, I know. It yeah. just goes to show the difference between that little six inch sniper coil uh, running on the equinoxes, and even Andrew's finding the same success. You know, he's running over uh, the very same ground that he ran over last week with the 540. He's now using the 800 today and plucking out those coins. Uh, so, if that doesn't tell a story, I don't know what does. But look, we've got the merchant token, we had the silver ring, which I presume, presume it's silver. Uh, penny, I think another penny, which we'll come back and find out in a second. A mystery item, uh, another penny, and now a florin, number eight for the year. So how cool is that? 1958, beautiful Australian florin, and as I said, number eight for the year. God, I'm shaky. I'm super excited. <laughs> what a run. What a run of success. And we've already got a heap of coins in the pouch. So awesome stuff. Let's have a bit of a look at this ring. And then we're going to clean up that token and we're going to come back and show you that fill in our holes and also uh, find out about that last mystery target so oh i would have had some pretty stones in there yeah. maybe they sold the stones when the house <laughs> burnt down maybe the wife lost her ring and uh, the husband said right oh pluck those stones out there they're getting hocked off yeah. uh, to build the new house so because that does look to me like it's been through a fire definitely silver maybe you can see that burnt patina on it so definitely silver, but looks like it's been through a fire. Uh, once, uh, once again, we'll clean up that token. I'll also clean up this ring and see if we can see any hole marks. We've finished cleaning up all our holes. We've filled in every one except the mystery hole up the back there, which we're going to get to in a second. However, I just wanted to show you this, uh, this coin that we got out, which I presumed it to be a merchant token, uh, just with Queen Victoria on the back there and its size. However, uh, this is actually an early penny, a, uh, an early English penny, 1854. Uh, so we've cleaned him up a little bit on the back there. I just was running him through uh, the, the dewy wet grass and trying to get a bit of water on him. I do not have any access to water at this site. Uh, so look, we've done the best we can. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, as I said, we can ID him as an old early a Cedar Britannia penny. So not a merchant token. I did get a little bit excited thinking he was going to be a merchant token. Seeing as though that one came out from here the other week. So let's put them both in the pouch, uh, the penny and the button. And as I said, let's get you over to that mystery item. We dug out every other a target and sat it at the hole. However, one there we did not dig up properly. So let's go have a look what he is. Who knows? Maybe this is another florin. I'm sure I've, uh, I'm sure I'm right on him. I think he just needs a little bit more persuasion to come out of the hole there. Down the back there. Oh no, maybe in the plug here. Maybe we do have him out already. Let's have a look. We've knocked him. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now that's how the cookie crumbles, isn't it? Our, uh, our mystery item. Uh, you know, we've got all these other coins and uh, the old penny there, 1854. Uh, there we go. The other item sitting there waiting was a bit of rubbish. Uh, that's okay, though, because you've seen the run that we had, uh, the successful run that we had there before, uh, the 1854 penny, uh, the silver ring without the stones. And yes, I did look for them, uh, sifting through the dirt, did not find any. Uh, then a few more pennies, and then to finish us off, uh, we had the 18, uh, the 1958 florin. So, what a ripper of a run. And we've only been here uh, just on an hour, about an hour and 10 minutes. Uh, so let's continue working along the front, uh, because there is a lot more signals to go, and one of them uh, could be a florin, another florin. 
So we've ventured out the back of the house now, and where we were this morning was on the other side of those pile of bricks. Just venturing out the back here though, and we have been going a little bit renegade underneath the trees, just seeing what signals are, are hiding under there. Uh, but look, coming back out in the open there, we have our next target, and I think I've found something shiny, shiny and special. Look at that, we've got a part of the old ring or brooch, I don't quite know what it is. Uh, very, very light and not, not, uh, not too much weight to it at all. Uh, but look at that, he's got the nice yellow plastic stone, I don't know. And the nice little uh, grilled edging around there, so very cool, very cool. Another one for us to clean up. A, uh, a bit of water would be very helpful at this site, like a tap, that'd be great. Uh, but that's okay, we can do that at home and show and share all these pieces coming out. And it is nearly time for a break. Uh, we've nearly filled up the pouch. Generally when I fill up the pouch and it starts getting heavy, uh, we go dump off and uh, take a break and then get back into it, regroup and go for round two. And look at that, we've got a lot of glass coming out from behind the house here too. I wonder if we're going to snag on any bottles today. Wouldn't that be nice? Like, uh, like Andrew found there uh, last week when we were here. So let's keep going, as I said, then it's smogo time. People who get bloody Florence. You reckon? Yeah, hand it out. Whoever gets the most Florence every month uh, win, wins the Macca's Aussie badge. Yeah. Aussie of the month. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Well, I think I'm going to take it this time because our next target, uh, look what it happens to be. Me and Andrew were just joking around there, but I called him over because we've just pulled out another stunning Florin. Ah, oh, that's uh, look, that's only about 10 minutes since the last one. I'm, uh, I'm still. Uh, still super excited from all the stuff we found before and we've found a few more coins in between what you have not seen uh, leading our way up to this next guy so oh that's magnificent the last one was a 58 this one is a 59 a super super nice condition though once we take him home uh, put him uh, put him through the cleaner uh, get, uh, even just a bit of toothbrush and water uh, to display this guy i think he will look perfect so great detail great coin and another one saved. That uh, that there puts me to number nine. Oh, and what are the chances? 1959. And as I said, number nine florin for the year. A fan with the Equinox 900. An absolute amazing machine. I was just saying to Andrew too, you know, last week when we were here, uh, you know, I actually shot up and filmed, I set up and filmed uh, from that dome top well, and I hummed around here on video for about 20 minutes, half an hour, picking up a lot of good signals. We even had the old fob watch coming out from over there. So how did I miss this signal? Uh, you know, how did I not find that floor in there the other week? And the only thing I can put it down to is the difference in coils. We were running the 11 inch coil last week. Uh, today we are opting for the six inch coil. And I'll tell you what, it is really, really paying off. So, wow, number nine florin, 1959, how awesome. I just yelled out to Andrew, you know how you don't like me today, finding the two florins and the early 1854 colonial penny and the silver ring? Uh, well, look, something just happened. Uh, we were around uh, the back pile of bricks there. I am about to stop for a, uh, a bit of a break, something to eat. Uh, and I've wandered my way around the front here. We did have the horseshoe button on. However, this was ringing up about, uh, about a 60-63. Ah oh dear, what did I say day one when we got here Andrew? There's every chance of an old buckle being here and a special buckle, not just any buckle, that being a cricket buckle. Well, I just, uh, I just dug out and popped out this and look at the impression in the dirt. Isn't that just fascinating? So there we go, I know straight away, as you can see, by the impression in the dirt, I know that we've got a cricket buckle there. And I knew that there could be one here. Oh, wow, that is awesome. So it's got the history uh, for the pennies and the merchant tokens, uh, even the old cow tags we've found here. Uh, so every chance of, uh, of a cricket buckle coming out, and there it is. What do you think about that, Buster? Give me that Macca's yeah, 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 Aussie yeah. of the Month badge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two florins, old, uh, old penny, cricket buckle, silver ring, Hell, we haven't even hit lunchtime yet. Isn't that, inf uh, isn't that amazing? So, ah, uh, and all from out the front here, which, uh, you know, to be honest, I did not touch on last week because I had the 11-inch coil, uh, so I wanted to get, you know, into this big open space and work that area, so. Oh, this be yours. That would be mine, thanks. I didn't even have to find it, but I will claim it. <laughs> and uh, whoever wins next month, we'll hand it over to them. Yeah. Aussie of the month. Oh, that's just, um, uh, look, I'm, I'm speechless. So yeah. we're going to get a few pictures of that, clean him up. I will come back and show you. Uh, and in the meantime, we are going to stop for a bite to eat. How cool.
Well, I tell you, some days are better than the others, and today has been a cracker of a day so far. We've got the florins, we've got the pennies, uh, we've got the old penny, and then to finish up, before we uh, took a break for lunch, we had the cricket buckle coming out, which is just spectacular. And look, I have not cleaned him up just yet. We do not have access to water at this site, uh, not that I've found a tap just yet anyway. And so look, coming back out, uh, we will clean up that buckle once we get home, but coming back out with the Equinox 900 around the front of the house here, and we're digging out some of those lower numbers now, seeing though that we've had such good stuff come out this morning. And look at our next target, would you? A little crown brooch with all the stones fixated still intact isn't that just fascinating and he was a, no, uh, a 49 I was gonna say 1949 that's certainly going to be older than that he was a 49 ringing up on the Equinox 900 though and I dare believe this piece would be a somewhere around 100 years old most definitely so that is just a glorious little piece and as I said, are pretty rare for all the stones to be still intact there. Generally, they're falling out in the dirt. And so once we get home, we are going to clean this piece up, just like the cricket buckle, toothbrush and water, a gentle clean up, and give you guys a look. It's just a fascinating piece, though, and I'm pretty super excited to see what else is going to come out next. Well, we've got our next target moving away from the uh, the crown brooch. How cool was that piece too? Not something that I've ever found. And we've got our next nice signal and that happens to be a pendant. I tell you what, we're on a run of success today, aren't we? Just magnificent. And so this being a little pendant uh, from basically Queen Elizabeth Royal Visit in 1954. Just a really special piece, and what makes it even more special is he has got the top piece still included. Generally, these are separated when lost or, you know, discarded. And look at that. He says, he's very, very nice condition, are presented to the children by the government of Victoria. And funnily enough, Andrew actually found one of these pieces, that top piece there, hunting down by the river with nibbles there, and we tried to ID him. So... Uh, there we go, Andrew, a month on, and uh, we've got the whole thing. So that is just a great piece. He looks so clean too. I'm just wondering, has, uh, has something been going on down in the hole there? Is something else down there hiding? Because he was quite a big target. So, And when I found him, this bit was folded over sort of like that. So we come out of the hole looking like that. But I knew what he was straight away with the, uh, the little loop up the top of that uh, pendant. So let's just, for curiosity's sake... Let's put the uh, pin pointer in there. There is nothing else going on down there. <laughs> so there we go. That is what our target was. It just sounded like a lot bigger target than that though. Uh, but the 1954 a Queen Elizabeth Royal Visit over to Victoria, Australia. A medallion pendant handed out to the school children. So, and the school, uh, I'll just tell you, the school is about ooh, two k's down the hill there. Uh, so I dare say it's come from school uh, up the hill and been lost straight away. So an awesome piece and another piece for us to go sit over on top of the uh, dome top well uh, because I don't want to put him in the pouch and get him scratched and ruined uh, with all the other items coming out. So over to our special place. And as I said, this is where we're going to shoot a conclusion at the end of the video and show you all these items cleaned up. So how cool. Look at all those coins. Tell you what, we are smashing it today, aren't we? And we've only just finished lunch. So let's get over back on the detector and let's see what that next signal was hiding behind us. So we're still humming along on the Equinox 900 and I will say uh, we are time limited today. Uh, we do need to get out of here very soon. It's coming on two o'clock. Uh, coming on three o'clock, it is time for me to go get the boys. So our next signal over the back here, I did not shut the, shut the, shut the hole just yet. Our uh, next signal is the Rue Penny. And we sort of wandered around uh, through the the, uh, the very trashy area that Andrew is currently working in at the moment. And you can see the mound are built up, I presume, from all the rubbish being dumped and filled in again. And so we've got one coin in the rubbish dump, put him into the pouch. Walking over here, we had a few more bottle tops, what have you, coming out. Uh, a big, uh, big old clock face coming out from in that hole there, which I'll pull out of the bag and show you. It's actually an interesting piece because it has uh, quite a bit intact there. So anybody uh, watching my videos in the past uh, would see that I find these, uh, you know, frames all the time, the square frames, uh, minus all the cogs. Uh, basically, that's what they were. So I always say that they, um, they are the clock cog backing plate. I got it right that time. Uh, but there you go. You can really see what I mean. You can see all the cl uh, cogs mounted to the uh, the clock backing plate. I got it right for a second time. Uh, so pretty cool. The old clog cog. cog 
clock backing plate. I got it wrong. Uh, there we go, though. Uh, our next target coming out right beside uh, the old backing plate is another coin. If you'll roll around in my hands there properly. Uh, so another Rue Penny there, George staring back, and once again, they're coming out in great condition. A lot of these coins coming out so far, even the ones that Andrew's been finding, uh, you know, going over and having a look, I cannot believe uh, the condition of them. So look at that, one wipe on the pants, and he looks brand new to the day he was dropped, probably some 50, 60 years ago. So awesome stuff, we're not sure of a year, we'll have to knock all that dirt off. And once again, another item for us to clean once we get home. Uh, just like the little uh, little crown brooch uh, and also the cricket buckle uh, sitting up on top of the tank there waiting for us. So, wow, what a fascinating day. I cannot wait to get home and clean up all these items and show them off in the conclusion. Let's keep cracking along. Well, sadly, that about wraps it up for us today there, guys. We are time limited. We do have to go get the boys from school. It has just gone 2 o'clock on the watch. So we've got all our finds laid out on the uh, the top of the dome top well here on the tin. However, what we're going to do, as I said, is get home and clean up those special items. So we've got a run of pennies, a couple of buttons, the old Queen's, uh, I was going to say Queen's coronation visit. It's not. It's the, uh, the royal visit from Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, old pendant there. We've got a few other doodads, bits and pieces, uh, the two florins, the old penny, uh, also the wonderful little crown brooch. Uh, but look, the main item that I want to get home and clean up uh, is the old cricket belt buckle there. We can see part of uh, part of what's going on. However, we need to see a little bit more on the front, and that's what we're going to do once home and clean up all those coins. So anyway, cracker of a day. I cannot wait to get back to Tony's Paddock again for round three. And as said, we will see you at home with everything here found today, cleaned up, ready to go through and give you a look. Rightio, so we are back at home now, guys. And as mentioned, we are going to go through and share and show what we did hunting there at Tony's Tiny Paddock. Uh, the second round there with Andrew and look as some will have seen we were opting for the little six inch coil this time which is just a ripper as opposed to the big standard 11 inch coil and you can really see the size difference there and what's what's happening uh, you know round one we we're using the, uh, the the 11 inch coil what's happening ideally at a very trashy uh, site is you have so many targets in the ground with the big 11 inch coil you're trying to pick up on all of them at once uh, so the coil is having to register all those targets and feed back to the control box uh, giving giving some mixed signals whereas uh, when you have that little six inch coil you can see the size difference there it is only covering six inches around diameter of ground at any one time therefore only picking up on a lot less targets at any one time therefore uh, giving a lot less information uh, to feed back to the uh, to the control unit there allowing you to easily uh, read that ground and what I like to call it is a sniper coil because it really gets in between uh, those targets when really hunting that trashy ground anyway enough of that uh, you've uh, you've seen as I said the difference that it can make especially at those really trashy sites now let's show you exactly what we found hunting there for round two as said at Tony's tiny paddock so we've got a run of pennies up the top and uh, look to be honest I did not think this many coins were going to come out from this one site because we did not find this many on the first run there uh, but as I said we were running the 11 inch coil uh, so we've got two four six eight ten eleven full pennies uh, we've got three little half pennies there a couple of roos and the old Cedar Britannia 1870 and we'll jump over to the uh, the right hand side here and we've got the wonderful old 1854 a Queen Victoria well, very blurry isn't it sorry picking up on my hand there uh, Queen Victoria 1854 a wonderful old English penny now these are a huge coin let me just pick up uh, one of the uh, the rue pennies and put beside it you can see the thickness and the difference uh, they are just a whopping whopping massive coin They're so heavy too i don't really know how you'd lose one of these uh, but look um like the token there last week that we found the hide and decal you know, just an interesting piece, and uh, it really shows great age to this site. So moving down, we've got the two florins. We've got the wonderful little crown badge with all the uh, the little stones in it. Just an amazing piece once again. And he was a brooch. He's uh, he's got the pins on the back. Just a great little piece once again, though. Uh, we are are avoiding the cricket buckle too just yet. Uh, we've got the uh, presented to the children by the government of Victoria, um, Queen Elizabeth II Royal Visit 1954 pendant, which is once again a cracker and very rare to find complete. A few little buckles, doodads, and buttons. Uh, we even had the uh, the yellow plastic uh, old look. I don't know part of suspenders, part of a brooch, I don't know, but Andrew found a very similar piece without the yellow plastic stone inside.
side. A few more buckles over this side, uh, the beautiful silver ring, uh, which look, we did clean him up a little bit there. Let's, um, let's sit him inside there and we'll go down and have a proper look because I'm a little bit shaky there. Uh, so look, pretty cool old ring. It does have some hallmarks inside. Let me see if we can show those on that side. So very hard to see. I am very shaky, but look, I can see a crown uh, and looks like a couple of little trees. I don't know, but one for me to put the loop on and uh, the magnifying glass on and check out in future further. Uh, so the last piece and the cracker piece uh, that I've been waiting to share is the cricket buckle. And now you've seen that come out, you've seen the impression in the dirt and uh, what a spectacular piece. Uh, these, are, these are pretty rare item, you know. You generally find them in the gold fields at the old gold mining townships. And I've found about a dozen uh, in the past, uh, you know, hunting around the old gold field townships. However, to find them at an old house site is just spectacular. And uh, I tell you what, very, very rare indeed. Uh, I can't think of too many house sites that I've hunted, and I've hunted hundreds uh, that I've found cricket buckles at. So a really, really special piece. And um, look, just what I'm thinking, you know, I, I visit so many different sites. Uh, you get a bit of an understanding and a feeling for, you know, what may, uh, what may be contained at these sites, uh, just through the age and uh, what's laying there, you know, the foundations or the bricks or uh, the remnants that are still remaining. Look, with what we're finding here so far, round one, I was not thinking it as much uh, until that token come out. Round two, uh, well, I'll tell you what, I'm definitely thinking it now. We've got the 1870 penny, the old cricket buckle, uh, the old 1854 uh, uh, English penny. What I'm thinking is obviously gold sovereign at this site. So look, some sites don't uh, don't show that potential, but this site definitely is. Uh, with th those old finds dating back around the 1850s, 1860s, uh, the cricket buckle there, probably 1870s. Uh, look, there's every potential for a gold sovereign to be found at this site because it shows, uh, you know, age from 1850 right through to about the 1980s with that Macca's badge coming out, uh, plus a two dollar coin that I found there. So. Look, phenomenal sight. We're going to be back there to Tony's tiny paddock in future. Uh, we are not going to be running the 11 inch coil much more. We're just going to be sticking with that little 6 inch coil uh, for future. And I will say, uh, you know, we, we do have some very big things coming for, uh, for digger detecting, uh, which will change all these sites that we hunt in future again, I'm sure, uh, which will give us even more success, I'm sure. So anyway, guys, that is about it for us today. We've had a cracker, a cracker of a run at Tony's paddock for round two. And we'll be back again there very soon, hunting for round three, and I hope to catch you there. Cheers, guys. Happy hunting. Music